Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, and welcome to today's Lacuna Festival's event. We're here with Simone and Rich from Centrifuge Arts, and I'm going to pass straight over to them to introduce tonight's event. All right, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Rich. I'm Simone. And uh, we are showing our film uh, called Letters to the Universe uh, that we made last year during the pandemic. Um, yes, this was filmed uh, right when uh, the Safer at Home orders uh, passed in Los Angeles. So it was before uh, people started wearing masks, before the quarantine was really kicking in. And so this uh, film was really born out of that strange sort of limbo when people weren't really sure what was going to happen. And we're really thrilled to be here and to uh, be able to show it with you today. My eyes cannot focus. I blink to exert my control over the smallest movements of my body. I write, redact my own words. I cannot bear them. They seem empty in this quiet place. They seem less weighty given the state, of, the things. state of things. Redact my own existence. I am afraid. afraid. Mostly of being alone. In this solitary, In this solitary room. room. There is no one left to blame. But me. My home. Its walls, its floors. The dust that has settled. my cupboards. I quickly consider others. I think of calling, ponder, writing, sending a letter, an email. Has it been too long to say again? I love you. I love you. I think, I think of you. I wish you well. I wish you well. I consider my dreams. I have always believed we would find one another, reveal ourselves to one another, become one another, my dreams and I. Had I, I only, only the time, the, time, the space, space, to commit myself to, commit to, myself my, vocation. to my vocation, yet, and with yet, only with these, only these, the time, the time, the space, the space. I am undone. I'm Paralyzed by choice. Paralyzed Mired by choice. Impossibility. Mired in possibility. Solace. The view is different from here. What I would take to a deserted isle, I have. But would I have chosen to take this self? Thoughts antagonize me. I have followed them round and round. I have followed them round paths, and round the winding paths, thick, thick with muck, with muck and, muck treacherous, and noise. treacherous noise. 
I must count, I must my, count steps, my steps, however small. I, I must, must muster, muster a sense, a sense of, purpose. of purpose. I must breathe, I must breathe and stretch, stretch and, shake and shake this sense, this sense of melancholic, of melancholic woe, from woe from this body from while this the choice body. is still my own. While the choice is still my own. You are in communion with are, those who have been, who shall who be, are, who shall alone, be alone. alone. I write from my soul. I write from my soul. Universe, a letter to the universe. And to those who are in it. And to those who are, are in it. There? I write from my soul a letter to the universe. Are you there? And to those who are in it. Are you there? Thank you. <laughs> uh, I'm a little bit like, <laughs> kind of feel like I need a little moment. That was really powerful. Really powerful piece. Mm. Do you think that we could start by maybe, you could tell us a little bit about how Centrifuge Arts came to be in existence and then kind of what led you to, to this piece? <laughs> Sure. Um, so for me, um, a huge part of, of what led me to starting to do a lot of writing and directing is uh, a lot of experiences that I had as a performer and feeling like um, the kinds of stories that I wanted to tell were, were not the things that I was auditioning for when I was really young in New York. And, you know, I so I, I felt um, that I really wanted to start um, using my voice to tell stories that I thought were really important and really meaningful. And I also wanted to do it in a way that was really ethical. Um, you know, I think, uh, especially in the, um, theater and, and dance performance world, there are a lot of, um, things that, that are common practice that they don't really take care of performers. And so for me, a huge part of the way we work is really, um, you know, making sure that everybody who's part of the process, um, is, is taken care of. And so that's really where, um, you know, a lot of, of the work we do really comes from. And uh, this piece in particular really started with a poem um, that I had written that uh, kind of came out of this feeling of uh, complete uncertainty and uh, not knowing what to do. Um, and it was really um, exciting because um, I got to work with uh, the two dancers, uh, the other two dancers who are in the piece, Christina and Marie, um, and we worked over Zoom and uh, we decided to create this movement vocabulary um, that really pulled from the themes that they found too in the poetry. And uh, so we worked really collaboratively on this. 
Um, and uh, one of the dancers was not able to come with us um, to film at Griffith Observatory. And so uh, we had her just film from home and I think it added a really nice layer um, to, the, to the piece. So there was a live performance um, uh, for a handful of people who were there, which was really strange because Griffith Observatory is this really iconic place in Los Angeles. It's usually, you know, filled with tourists and it was a rainy, cold day and there were maybe a handful of people uh, who came by and just watched these improvised uh, dances that we were uh, doing based on uh, a choreographic vocabulary we had built together. Um, and Rich did all of the cinematography and uh, he uh, wrote and improvised all of the music. So um, yeah, that's, that's sort of it in a nutshell. <laughs> wow. How, how far into the, the pandemic was it when you actually started creating the piece? It was really early on. It was before um, the lockdown happened. So it was right in that there was like a two week period in Los Angeles where they didn't tell people to wear masks, but they started to tell people that, you know, maybe they should be safe, staying home. Um, but it was not really apparent um, what was going to happen. And, and the, the only mandate they said was that people need to, to be six feet apart. So we did this as part of a festival um, called Art at Six Feet, which was put together by the Level Ground Collective. And so it was sort of a pop-up art festival, uh, a little bit guerrilla style. So they had artists mm -hmm. that you know, were in all of these places that were unoccupied um, and that were normally really huge uh, locations for, um, you know, people to go visit in Los Angeles. So it was neat. Uh, we had, we were one of uh, several groups of artists that, that uh, participated in that. Okay. Um, so because I don't want to sound really stupid, but the, the the pandemic happened at such a different rate all over the world um, and I'm kind of I'm split in in two because I work in the UK and in Lanzarote and so already my kind of pandemic timeline is a little bit a little bit hectic so for me the kind of beginning of the pandemic was when I almost got shut out of my own country that's a pretty dramatic start isn't it and that was kind of March the the 14th um, last year. Is, was it a similar timeline for you in LA? I think so, so, yeah, I think I, I, I something like that March 13th, March 14th, where uh, things were starting to close. And then uh, we did this in late, late April. So um, I think it was when they were still kind of figuring out uh, what the rules were going to be. But yeah. Uh, okay. Can I go again? That doesn't yeah, count yeah. as my question, does it? <laughs> okay. So my, my question was actually to you, Rich, about the kind of um, the cinematography, I guess. And I wondered if you could talk a little bit about the choice of colour. Uh, well, yeah. Um, actually, I think that was the colour was maybe your more your choice. But uh, <laughs> we... Um, uh, we, it was it was really improvised so it was just me with the camera with an umbrella just trying to follow them around <laughs> and trying to get some some beautiful shots um and then uh editing wise just working with the material that we got from christina which she took on her own in her in her home um so kind of piecing those together uh but the the black and white i'm not sure how we came across that. i don't remember um i think a lot of it had to do with trying to um, create this world that really felt like it was a, a nice merge of the two um, because the the actual experience of being in Griffith Park in the rain was very different in terms of aesthetic from what uh, was happening in, in uh, Christina's home and I think we wanted to kind of bridge those two worlds and so you know I think that that was part of it and I think stylistically you know we also kind of talked about how we thought it worked because it kind of felt like we were in this sort of moment in time um, that was really isolated and uh, and very strange. And so, you know, I think the removal of color um, was uh, a deliberate choice um, to, to kind of help add to some of this feeling of, of it being a little bit stuck and a little bit strange. It kind of made it feel like it had like a little bit of kind of, um, 
uh, like historic gravitas somehow you know it made it it made it really kind of almost monumental yeah like yeah it, it felt it felt a very it felt a very isolated moment like say with it with it being closed and with there not being people there and with the rain kind of as heavy as it was it yeah it was really did you go specifically on a day when it was going to be raining or was that like how it <laughs> happened <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, and it, and it never rains here. Yeah, <laughs> maybe maybe just a handful of days a year, and uh, we almost, you know, we were thinking weren't. we should, maybe we shouldn't go, but I just went for it, and um, yeah, yeah, and 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 Maria was up for it, and she was fearless, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, bending backwards and and not worrying about slipping. <laughs> on the yes, I thought that, and she was on a little kind of metal platform at the time as well, wasn't she? And I was like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I will say she she does she's a really fantastic dancer and she has excellent control. So I was <laughs> maybe not as worried. Um, and, you know, it was it was all her her choice. Um, yeah, yeah, of course. But, but yeah. <laughs> have you got? Um, I was just going to ask how how do you think you would have altered the piece? How how do you think it would have changed? If it had been kind of a couple of weeks further in, do you think that would have had a much a much stronger impact on on how you would have performed it? Yeah, I mean, I think so because um, I mean, I think it was the Monday after is when the mask mandate went into effect, and I think that's when people really started to feel a difference in terms of safety. I think up until that point, it was just confusion. And that's really where this came out of. Um, so we were editing in in this, in a different moment, which yeah. I think also adds to it, but the, the performance itself and the physicality, I think would have been changed um, just, you know, out of pure, um, you know, safety reasons, you know. Um, and I think um, this piece, it really, comes from a moment of uncertainty and really not not clear information, truly. Um, yeah. You know, there were not really very clear guidelines about what was going on. It was just you were sort of getting uh, bits of news from other places in the world and, you know, sort of a vague, just don't be close to each other, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, but, but with a really, um, you know, unclear reasoning, um, you know, in terms of the messaging that was coming through at the time. So I, I definitely think that if things had, had happened, uh, if this piece had happened later on, that it would have felt different or it would have been done completely differently, just, you know, because we would have also had more information. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I have one more. If, if you were to be asked, well, you are being asked. Why you are started like that? You are being asked. <laughs> what silly start to a question? <laughs> oh, sorry. Um. So, I think it's because I can't word the question right. If you were to be asked one important thing that you really wanted audience members who've seen this piece to know, what would that thing be? Mm -hmm. um, that's interesting. Well, for for me, just watching this again after not actually not watching it for a while, I I felt myself transported transported to that time, and um, a lot of those feelings resurfacing, like the the uncertainty and and just general scariness of the whole thing, like un, un, not knowing what we're gonna do for you know, um, and I I do think that was kind of the theme of the whole thing. It's just it, it was just came out of a moment. I'm everything from the writing to, uh, you know, all the clarinet playing and things that we recorded was just uh, not planned, just really just us getting it out basically. Cause I think it was, you know, first month of just sitting with ourselves and sitting with our thoughts inside our house and, and um, ev everyone doing that. But I, I think uh, that's what, that's what uh, hopefully came across. And I think for, for me watching it again, I, I was, I was brought back to that very, weird specific time um which yeah. you know i think i think a few months later yeah we all kind of said okay this is the new normal or whatever and now we're now we're here a year later we're like this is you know we're like things we're used to that were just very strange at the time mm -hmm. <laughs> um so yeah i was brought back to that that feeling of that time 
I think um, for me, what the reason that I wrote this poem is I, it was a bit reactionary. I think, you know, I'd been having conversations, especially uh, with people in performance and in theater specifically, because, um, you know, there were a lot of people who their lives really did stop and their, and their work stopped in a way where they didn't feel like they could do anything anymore. I think, you know, depending on what medium you work in, you know, maybe isolation is not the worst thing necessarily in terms of your artistic practice. But I think for people who are um, theater practitioners, there was a a huge uh, emotional loss for for a lot of people, and I was in talks with a lot of um, other theater directors who were saying things like, "I don't know who I am anymore," and I thought that that was really you know, there, there was a lot of that that was coming, not just from people in theater, I think from, you know, all around, because I think it was the first time a lot of people stopped and they had to just be with themselves. Yeah. And I, I think that, you know, it's really easy for us to use our lives to distract us from whatever it is that, that we're, we're running away from. And so I think that what was really special about this piece is that, you know, all four of us really got to talk very deeply about, you know, what matters to us and what things, um, you know, we, we, we felt were important. And, and in this moment, we, you know, we were um, really looking to create a piece that was about um, finding some way to just sit with who you are and, and not worry so much about the other things and not be obsessed with the feed of things that you're looking for to kind of distract you from the fear and the anxiety and the, and the pain and the loneliness and all of those things. And can you just be, and, and can you deal with all of that stuff um, in a time like this? And, you know, I think the answer is different for a lot of people for very different reasons. And I think, you know, um, a lot plays into, you know, everyone's experiences of how the pandemic has been. Um, and, you know, so I, I'm, I say that with, you know, full awareness that not everyone can just sit with this. Um, but I think that that was something that was important to us is to ask the question, can you? Yeah, I think it's something that will resonate with a lot of people as they watch it, you know, and they'll go through this, they'll go through the emotions and they'll relive their kind of, yeah. um, yeah, lived experience of that moment because it's so kind of communicative, it's so descriptive and it's so, it kind of gets right, it gets right into the, the heart of it, you know? It's really, yeah. Is there anything else you want to add? No. Before? Okay, so then I will ask, where can people find out more about you if people would like to watch more things or to follow you on social media or anything like that? Uh, yeah, we're all we're on all the platforms uh, at Centrifuge Arts uh, website, centrifugearts.com, and uh, the video is up currently on our YouTube, um, and uh, should be up on our Vimeo as well. Uh, but I yeah. uh, hope they check it out also on the Lacuna Fest YouTube. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so much for your time and for sharing this performance as part of the festivals. Um, we felt really blessed to have you here and um, part of it. Yeah, it's been it's been really moving. I've really enjoyed it. Um, so thank you very much and stay safe. And hopefully, one year you'll be able to make it over if you're yeah. moving to Barcelona. Yeah, yeah definitely, definitely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, great. It was our pleasure to join. Thank you.